Hello everybody. Welcome. It's another Thursday and that means this is unplugged. And welcome, welcome, welcome from whichever part of the world and whatever time of the day you are watching us. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. My name is Julia Opujax and um, I'm your regular from unplugged. So August and September, sorry, July and August have been really interesting because we delve into an area that we've never gone into before, and that's the area of food. And we themed our series, Food, Glorious Food. I mean, who doesn't love food? Who doesn't need food? I mean, even if you're not a foodie like I am, you'll definitely love food. So, um, um, please give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay. So, sorry, just that was just a technical glitch. Forgive me. So, over the past um, six or, six weeks or so, we have journeyed from potatoes, to palm oil paste, to yogurts and parfaits, to alternative grains for bread and other confectionery, and most recently to pastoral dairy farming. And as we wind up the series on food, glorious food today, there are a few things that we've learned and we know for sure. It is very important to know the source of your food. And it's very important for you to know that what you eat and how you eat it and when you eat it can affect your physical, mental, and I dare say your, your emotional outlook. Very important. It's a lesson that um, some good friends of mine had tried to teach me some years ago. But now talking to people with um, who know what they're doing on this food business, then um, I have learned a lot more, you know. And it's also important for us to create new and very respectful um, agricultural pathways, which enable us to co-create with the traditional communities. We don't just go in there and trample all over them, but we, we co-create with them and we are respectful of what the traditions may be. And gradually we're all moving together. So the other thing I have learned and which I am practicing almost right away is that we can all grow some, if not all of our food. I have already started on that path with uh, Jackie Aquaranta of my plant life and um, I'll be documenting the birth of my edible garden or may I, may I say the rebirth of my edible, edible garden here and on YouTube from September. It's, it's going to be, um, how do I call it? An adventure for me because I've never really done gardening in an intentional way but this is going to be a farm in my backyard and that's going to be great so I'll share with you and tell you guys how it's going you now so for today our guest on Unplugged is Oyo Ifium oh yes guys I went all the way back to Cali City my city for this Oyo Ifium is the brain behind the Guru Foundation <clears throat> he's an Obama Africa leader and is a young emerging political fellow. He is also the founder of Iwang NG, an agritech brand that does your marketing, online marketing runs from you, for you. So please join me to welcome Oyo Ifium. Oyo, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Ma. I really appreciate it. It's fine. You're looking amazing and ever beautiful. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's kind of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to. Um, can you unjoin on Instagram so I can invite you? Oh, okay. Or maybe, or maybe you ask to join. Ask to join okay. the. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. 
It's still working. It's not working. Okay, let me see if I, I can add you. Okay, I'm re I've requested. You've requested. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I have accepted. So hopefully oh. see you on very soon. Meanwhile, hello to everyone on Facebook. Hi, Asien. Hi, Cesalero. Hi, Jerry. Yeah, that's you on Facebook. Um, hi, Drone. Okay. And hi to hello to everybody on um, on Instagram and everybody who's here on Facebook with us. Thank you very very much for joining. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh yeah, would you like us to send you the link, or do you have it so you could send to your your okay. friends? I, I I have the link, so I'm sending it across. Okay. Now. You're sending it across. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're getting some people. Thank you, everybody who's joining us on Instagram. So yes, Oyo. Let's start with the name. Let's start with the name. I mean, I'm an epic woman. You're an epic guy, yeah. young man. Iwang, Iwang. Yeah. Why the name? And um, what does it mean? Why did you choose that name? And what does it mean to you? Okay, so basically for me, um, last trial last year i've been trying to see how i can build brands from a local name uh, because it's important to show where you're coming from and by so doing i can export our local name to global to the global community so that's been my mindset uh, so i started first with our blog called neme uh, from the neme as a blog i i thought about in one as an agri tech company so it's just about okay many people them. here don't know what neme means so you, you yeah. have to tell them okay neme is gist <laughs> like coming okay. together to talk yeah. yeah yeah okay and iwang means what farm iwang means farm farm okay. yeah okay now from my understanding which must be maybe decades ago iwang was somewhere that you used to go to it was a big not just the one in the back of your house it was a yeah. big plantation yeah you know but i mean yeah. right now it could mean garden home garden everything so essentially you're talking about farming guys and that's what iwang is yeah so let's let's look at um let's talk a little bit about your the video that you had we, we had a very interesting, you, you shared with us, we had a very interesting scenario where we moved from daytime to nighttime and uh, it was all about plantains. Can you just give us a context of where you were and what you were doing? Uh, okay, I think maybe it would be more important to start from uh, how I got into the business, what inspired me. No, I, I will I ask you, I will oh, okay. ask you that question, yeah. I will. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking at the video because people have asked. Okay, so basically, uh, that that day we when when we came back from getting our uh, plantain from farmers where we sourced it from in Crusher Estate. So we had we had already had customers that demanded for those produce. So we needed to take it to them because usually for us we don't buy anything to keep. We only buy when customers request for it. We are an online platform. So if you say, I need 100 bunches of plantain, uh, we will deliver within one to three days. So immediately we get it down. We try to get it across to the people that requested for it. So that day we we're delivering, and it was our first day in the business. So it was exciting trying to see how to meet people who requested for, for the plantain. Uh, we had to distribute all of it within 24 hours because that was a milestone. Distribute everything you have within 24 hours. Let's see how we can manage the logistics of um, of the business totally. Okay, okay, because it was so, so that was Calabar. Out. That was Calabar. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was Calabar. So, yeah, to your what you wanted to say, how how did you get into this? Because um. You were into other things. You were founder of the Guru Foundation, or the brain behind the Guru Foundation, the Young Emerging Political Fellow, and Obama 
African leader, and now you're the founder of Iwang.ng. So how did all of this lead to Iwang? Oh, okay, so 2021 during COVID, I had the opportunity to work um, on a project uh, called Crossover Green Money. The project was um, initiated by the governor of, of Crossover State. So uh, one of my senior boss got me as one of the consultants for the project. We did all the paperwork, we flagged up the project. Uh, basically, the governor wanted to provide funds to youth that want to get into agriculture or want to upscale um, what they're doing. So he wanted to produce more green millionaires. So it was exciting, exciting for me because I, I, I've been leading young persons for over 10 years. So uh, finally, I, I was going to be able to get young people who were interested in into agriculture, into agriculture, provide um, incubation, then funding for them. So after we did all the paperwork, flagged up the project, finally the money did not come. And it, it became quite challenging because we had over 5,000 farmers across Cross River State that had registered on the website. We measured their farms. We did all the due diligence, but the funds did not come. And something that struck my mind was, uh, because I'm always careful with anything, government is involved sometimes. So one of the days uh, they did a broadcast and they used my personal number. So people now knew that I was directly involved with the stuff. So they started calling me, those that knew me, what's happening with this project. So from that moment, I became so passionate about agriculture. I said, since this project has failed, what can I do as a person? So initially, when I thought about the one, I was thinking about us building sustainable farms uh, where we get true crowdfunding, we get funds and um, give to small older farmers, people who have one to 10 hectares of land so that we can increase the yield and the yield of, of crops in Crush River State. But 2021, uh, crowdfunding wasn't so, so, did not go out well in Nigeria because of so many scams. So because I love my name and the value of credit, I decided to um, stop the project. But February this year, um, I had about a competition by NISDA, uh, an hackathon program for South South. So I went into the competition. I, I put out my idea, the one idea, and I came out first position. So because of that, I said, okay, I needed to remodel. I, I decided to remodel in one now basically building an online marketplace where restaurants across Africa can actually buy food items from farmers and food manufacturers. So that, that's been the journey. And I want to create employment for young persons. And I think the best way is through agriculture and other uh, businesses. So that's been the journey, man. That, that's really interesting. I, I like the term green millionaires. That's, 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 that's a, a healthy way and a sustainable way of, um, of making money, especially in our past in the South South where I think agriculture, I, th I think all over Nigeria, because we've spoken to people from Plateau State all the way to the pastoral North, far North, and then um, now in the South South as well. So there are lots of people who are willing and ready to know what is happening, what is happening, how can they become green millionaires? And um, I would like to ask, what, what is there anything that you can do? To, um, how would I call it? Transfer from what you learned during the, um, the government initiative because I, be, I believe personally that there's no, no, no uh, lesson learned, no experience is a waste. Because you talked about incubator, and I think that's a very interesting thing, but is that something that you would, um, you would consider going forward as you, you develop your muscles in this Iran field? Yeah, yeah ob obviously I will because you know, uh, one of the issues we have with agriculture is that many people don't do it as a business. Uh, they just mm -hmm. do it as something they are doing for the meantime, expecting the white collar job or whatsoever. I've interacted with so many farmers because due to the nature of our business, we, we are dealing with farmers. So I, I get into local communities, 
have round table with uh, stakeholders. Uh, usually, I, I just see that they want to move to something else. They, they, they're just doing this. They expect that someday there's going to be a big break. And like the chairman of African Bank said that we must think about agriculture as a business. So if we have to do that, then there must be an incubator program where young people learn how they can do the business of agriculture not just agriculture they need to understand the business of agriculture how can you pick up a simple idea how can you transform that farm your parents have been doing for 30 years or 50 years and turn it into a business because most uh, like like the services have it that 84 percent of farmers are doing one to ten hectares of land they are small orders farmers so they're actually not doing business um, they are not registered, they are not legal, they can't get funding uh, for what they are doing. So we need to teach people how they can get into the business of agriculture through incubation. Then when they scale through, they can get funding uh, to, to improve upon what they're doing. I believe th this, this is going to be a later phase of what we are doing um, as we keep growing and scaling up. Okay, okay. So, um do you source everything you do locally everything i mean we saw a lot of plantains i saw also mention of cassava on your on your social handle page but do yeah. you source everything locally within cross river states yes we source within cross river state because mm -hmm. our major demography is calabar we're selling to restaurants across calabar Although we've had, um, presently we have someone in UK that wants us to deliver to the UK market. Uh, we hope to scale, we hope to scale actually, but we source from Cross River State then to the city, um, to Calabar. Okay. Okay, and what crops do you source? Is it basically just um, the plantains of cassava or anything no. on the land? basically anything on demand uh but for now you know that there's some food items that are not really in demand like now yam yams are not in actually available in crush river state because they are waiting for new yam festival the yams we're consuming in crush river basically now are from Inugu. so uh, if someone asks for yam the yams we're giving are not yams from crush river state because yams in crush river state we are waiting so communities have started their new yam festival so by by next month, there will be yams in Cross River State that we can send across anyway. So yam, um, gari, plantain, uh, melon, and cocoa. Anything, anything. Food. We have we have, we have food in Cross River State. We have food in Cross River State. Okay. Well, how about fish? I'm just concerned. I'm just I'm just asking because I know yeah. we do have a lot of. We do fish, fish crayfish. Well. Yeah, we do. Okay. Depending on demand. So if people request for, if you request okay. for any of those items, we can send it across to you any way you are. Okay. Okay. Now, you, you did talk about um, restaurants as being, is that the main focus? Or can um, the regular Joe and Jack off this? Okay, well, uh, the question I wanted to ask is, is being asked here. So let me just read it. From your description, your cost, customer target seems to be non-individuals, that's um, corporates yeah. or businesses. Do you supply to individuals on request, perhaps? Yes. Uh, you know, every business has a business model. Our business model is B2B, business to business. For now, we're focused mm -hmm. on businesses. But if an individual requests for food item, obviously, we're in business for making money, so we will supply. So you are primarily, we are out for restaurant, but if you ask for food uh, supply, obviously we'll, we'll supply to you. We'll supply to some individuals actually. And even in um, business profitability, we make more money even supplying to individuals than to um, restaurants. You know, restaurants want to buy and sell to, to customers to make more money. So we are up here to sell to individuals, but you know, every business you must, for our business, like running an e-commerce, the logistics is the other part of it. So we we don't have the ability to, for instance, maybe let's say 10,000 people request for food item in Calabar. We can't undo that now. So when we are able to undo the logistics, we'll move into 
individuals, but we cannot do the restaurants um, that are signed up on our platform because it's easier to do that. And the buy in bulk also, though the um, interest might be little, but it will keep us in business still. We're able to scale up to get um, all the fundings for the logistics then. We will now start B2C business to customer. Okay, so that's something you can grow up to, but um, yeah, uh, well, if, yeah, but need, request if money need for, be, you know. okay, okay, but would there be like a minimum? I'm just asking, would there be like a minimum order or you commit to ordering for because I use them, um, um, tech, tech enabled platforms as well to order food, and yes. I am a very, I'm a very happy, lazy woman in the sense that it makes it possible for me to go concentrate on my area of focus Especially while people can, yeah, people can do what they do. And I'm willing to pay that little extra rather than go to the market and, uh, and get every cobble myself, you know? So if, if somebody were to say, okay, listen, I'm willing to pay X amount, put X amount down for three months, you know, and you supply me this every week or every month, would that be a consideration? I'm not trying to tweak your business model. I'm just asking because yes. I have people in I have peeps in Calabar who are on the, on the platform who, who may yes. want to know. Yes. No, obviously, like I've said already, that we are in business to make money. So if mm -hmm. somebody wants us to supply, you want us to supply you food. Trust me, tomorrow morning you're going to see our team delivering you food, <laughs> yes, because, because we need to pay bills. Yes, yes. we need to pay yes. bills. So we are available for all delivery, all, all delivery. And how do they reach you? Is it at iwang.ng or? Yeah, www.iwang.ng. You can send us a WhatsApp message. Um, also, you can send a message through our social media handles. We are flexible every, everywhere you go with them. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Let me also now get to um, policy. I mean, if there are any other questions, we, we'll take your questions on individuals, but I think Oyo has um, very, um, how do I call it, um, diplomatically answered his, the question, you know, yes. So if there are no questions or comments on that for now, let, let me look at um, government policy. And um, I don't want to look at it in terms of what doesn't work, but what can work. Um, the fact that government had interest is good, as far as I'm concerned. The thing to do is to keep pressing in. You, have, you did the documentation. You and your team did the documentation. So it would be easy to represent this, tweak it and represent, because for us to scale up, for any growing business to scale up, you need enabling policies. So I, I would say perhaps keep those, um, keep those, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Those um, wonderful notes and things that you made, you know, as a consultant, you know, uh -huh, you, you did some research, and you made, I mean, does, it, does the government own that, or is the intellectual property yours? No, it's not my. you know, I, I was part of the team, so uh, the leader of the uh -huh. team has all okay. the documents. Uh, basically, we're even thinking, uh -huh. in case people want to do stuff in agriculture, they can actually buy data from the project and all of that. Uh, to assess okay. the work we did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think that's another income stream. There will be many people, I'm sure. But let's see. Uh, now, forgive my use of this word. How do we, how do we get um, farming to be um, SEXY? Interesting. Mm -hmm. We need to get farming to be interesting, to be sexy, because a lot of people want... They want, they want something good. They want to say, okay, this is what I do. You know, and you talked about farming becoming a business. How do we work on that mindset? Because um, truly 
in your generation, the millennials and the Gen Z is coming. Actually, last week we spoke to um, Aisha Bashir, who is into pastoral dairy production. And um, she's a millennial. She's a Stanford graduate. And she's decided that what she's going to do, she's going to work with all those people who are small, small holders, essentially, and work with them to build a system. In fact, she said a very interesting thing. She said the cows belong to the, in the north, where she operates, the cows belong to the men, but the milk belongs to the women. Very interesting, <laughs> you know, <laughs> very interesting, <laughs> you know. So the women are allowed to milk the cows, but the men own the cows. Yeah. So, are there scenarios like that that you've discovered in Cross River States? Okay. Where, um, okay. There's this gender, um, how do I call it, schisms, yeah. No. You, you know, in Cross River State, we have gender balance. God bless you from, you're an ethnic woman. You know, we value women like men and it rubs off on every um, tribe in Cross River State that women and men are well valued. So you, you asked initially, how can we encourage um, millennials into agriculture? Well, uh, my my blueprint for agriculture was basically it's uh, basically to build smart farms. I think what we intended to do initially when we were kickstarting in one was to discover the farm ops in Cross River State. Okay, let's say cassava, we can have more of maybe rice in Obubra. So we build a smart farm. So what are those things that usually want to take young people out of local rural community to the urban city? Can we make those things available so they can have access to all of it? They can have access to internet, uh, internet. they can have access to hospital, to recreational centers um, around the farm. So they won't want to leave and come to the urban city, to the urban, because whatever they need is available in the rural community. So our plan for building sustainable farm was to build smart farms where you have everything you need. When you are sick, there's no need of coming to Calabar. There's an hospital that can provide, that can cater for the needs of all the farmers. Uh, you need to send your child to good schools. There, there's a school. Anything you need should be available in those communities. When we are able to build um, interrelated businesses around agriculture, then we'll be able to uh, inspire more persons to think about agriculture as a way of life, as a business. And then we can now have more um, funding organizations being available to provide funds, help these people to register their business, teach them how to do business, um, have access to technology, have access to data, to information, uh, through the smart, the smart farm we, we intend to build in future, yes. So this, this, that will solve a lot of problems. And then we we'll also work with um, like agriculture departments. I think that the, most students that are in agriculture departments are not passionate about agriculture. And mm. we can tweak all of these by, by seeing how to design more interesting and engaging programs for students in agriculture where they can even assess farms and start their farm, build their teams. Um, they can build their little corporation and begin farming as a business from school. I'm going to push back a little bit on that, but I hear what you say. and I think it's very interesting. And I'll, I'll come back to that, the ecosystem that needs to be in, in place. But I'm going to push back a bit on that and, and say that there are places that are in very remote areas, like um, the person I interviewed, who was our guest, um, Nimde, in, in Plateau State. And uh, this is a bunch, she, she runs a bunch of, um, it's a group, you know, what is, what does she call it? A social, social enterprise, yeah, social enterprise that's working with these um, farmers, smallholder farmers, and they are, they focus on potatoes for now, but they are planning other things, you know, and it's a pilot project. They're working with the, um, uh, it's not MS, sorry. They, they, 
how do you call it? Anyway, the traditional rulers and with the women and the owners and the men in the farms. And I, I just want to want, I, this is my thinking. I may be wrong, but I'm an ethical man. I've been an ethical man all my life. Is this yeah. also, may th could this also be an attitude issue? Because people are, you know how they say chop clean mouth? You know, people are doing mega farms. People are collaborating with other people. They decide that they're going into, they're going to stay in those plantations for a while and come back. And they're counting their money, clean money, like you said, green millionaires. They don't care about how they look. They're doing well. So could this, is it possible in your interaction with young people that this could be an attitude issue? Yeah, it's it's very possible. You know, we, we're in a generation where everybody wants to be a CEO and competition, we think more of competition than collaboration, um, mostly for the millennials and generation Z. Uh, it's actually, a big issue but like for the local communities i've interacted with farmers i discovered that when they are going for they have times they go for maybe to plant so if they want to plant everybody will go to plant in this particular person's farm they move like that they move like that they move like that so they do it well they, they, the farmers they do it well but for my own generation um we want to be one man standing, doing everything alone, uh, which is an attitudinal problem. Okay. Okay. Um, obviously, we, we won't be able to solve that attitude problem but in one day, but it's something that we need to keep talking about and showcasing the successes that people have had from collaboration. collaborating. And yeah, if you send six six months or nine months in a farm wearing some raggedy clothes and your children are going to school well and you can at the end of the day go on a, a great vacation and you're driving a great car i mean yeah. when you're in the farm no yeah i mean it depends on how i mean as far as i'm concerned money is money yeah you know nobody's going to say farm money farming money smells it doesn't smell <laughs> it doesn't you know? <laughs> it doesn't smell doesn't you know especially when you get to the export part of it and i know there's a whole new protocol the whole different protocol for exports mm. yes know. yes uh, I, i'm i'm even trying to learn that because since i have someone that wants me to export to uk i've made the export commission i'm going through um, they just they've given me this i need to get certificate and all of that so I think okay. maybe in one, two weeks, I'll be ready for, for any exportation. For that. Okay. Um, I want to put a question up or a comment. Okay, I'll just say um, it needs, the attitude issue needs deliberate and intentional re-education using a pilot scheme approach and scaling up step by step. Now, um, one thing we do very well in Julia Jack's consulting is that we set the ball rolling. We may not do it to the end. Actually, that's not what we are called to. We are called to amplify people's voices and we are called to help people where possible develop collaborations. People have partnered a lot on this platform and um, from just being on this platform. So just in case it is possible that somebody says, I'd like to do something, start a pilot scheme. Would you have the details, the facts and the figures at your fingertips ready to start? Yes. Yes, I, I will. I, I have many persons like daily now reaching out, oh, I, I want to start this, I want to start that, I want to help me do that. Uh, we are available because the beauty of it is that we can have so many stars shining. Like I tell people, mostly for those who are in Cross River State, our, our economy, we need, our economy can't be solved. Our, our problem cannot be solved by government alone. We need more entrepreneurs, more business in Cross River State. Um, the cash flow in Cross River State is 18 billion monthly. 9 billion goes to the government, 9 billion to the private sector. And that's so little. So we must see how to increase this number. 
and the the the, the, bulk, the bulk of the nine billion goes to Lafarge, um, NMPC, and flour mill. So the money in the hands of the people it's too little. It is only when we start building um, real enterprises out of the city. One thing that inspires me is when, when you go to Marian, that is the center of Calabar, like a kind of center of Calabar, you can't see a local business that is paying above 50,000 it tells, it tells an it, it tells an issue that oh no nothing too much is happening in the city and it's going to take young persons who are going to build new businesses that that is using technology to scale up with numbers uh, so that we can have a new kind of business environment in the in the city that is employing people so we are we are available for all kind of partnership and also the good thing is that we are even we're setting up an incubate um, an incubation innovative up in cross river university of technology the university gave us a space uh, that's true my foundation so um, we hope to set up so people can people can learn how to do business uh, the right way they can learn they can get new skill they can build their technological skills have access to information for grants and and, and whatever through through uh, through the center. So we hope we hope to do so much uh, through the little opportunity God has given us. Okay, and if I may suggest, please share your story widely. And um, there are people in our generation that you may think maybe we can't. We don't. We may have the reach. We may not be willing to farm, but we may be willing to invest. You know, so share it widely and um, tell your story consistently. Now, this is something I realized. Um, in fact, we, we called it in we call it in our office the uh, the farmer conundrum. That anybody involved in a Greek is so involved in it that they don't take time out to tell their stories. And th this your generation understands storytelling. That is what's, what changes them, you know? The generation loves and understands storytelling. So, well, as much as you can, yes, please. And then when you do a pilot scheme, there'll be people. You have to also be willing to start, get partnerships, you know, to, to have a pilot scheme. But I hear what you said about different um, things have to be part of the infrastructure. You have to have good hospitals, you have to have good hospitals. You have to have schools, education system. You have to have malls, things like malls, you know, recreational centers. You have to have security, you know. That's very, very important. You have to have security. Uh, we also have to, um, there's so many stakeholders that can be engaged. But as far as I'm concerned, nothing is impossible. You know, if we do want people to, um, if you do want people to uh, have data and stuff like that, then and there's enough of an ecosystem there, I'm sure the the people who provide data can can do that. You know, it's just a matter of yeah intentionality. But well done, well done in what you're doing so far. Well done, you know. Thank you. Okay, so that there's um. There's something that a quote we got from the economists, and it wasn't about um, it wasn't about. Sorry, somebody just came into my my yard, and I wanted to be sure who they are. You know, it wasn't okay. about um, about the agric. Um, it was general, but it was dairy farming in Nigeria, and. But this, this could um, reflect on you. It says, farming in Nigeria is tricky at the best of times. Only the brave or the downright crazy would think of dealing in it. <laughs> what do you think about that quote? Is this a fair quote? <laughs> it's, it's the reality of uh, farming in Nigeria. Um, if, if if you're not crazy enough, you can't you you can't get into agriculture. 
uh, agriculture demands a whole lot from you. Uh, if mo it demands your health sometimes, it demands your mentality, it demands, it demands separation from your family, from loved ones, mostly for those ones that are going into the farm itself. So it's a crazy business and, and mo most times the farmers don't even see a lot of money uh, because of different factors that affect farming in Nigeria. Like I remember when I tried potato farming the first time, after I planted, um, that was in Bia, at Biase. The guy that was taking care of the farm for me was supposed to harvest a, a week before the rain, if one, one serious rain fell. So the rain fell, spoiled, destroyed all the potato in the ground, and I lost the total farm because Whoa. because of that so so many things so if you're not ready for you if you're not ready to take all of this uh, you you can't be in agriculture so food wastage and um spoilage yeah. and i guess even the processing food preservation yeah. those are all issues yes, and having always. trustworthy um yes yes but I think that that's um, what you said could could um, it could it could reflect on everybody who wants to run a, a good business if you want to hustle and that's a conversation I had with my coach at the beginning of the year and she very clearly and anyone who wants to go back and look at that it's on YouTube a conversation in January I think the third week of January with um, Pastor Bidemi Makmodi you know and she. She looked at the difference between um, hustling and working. That hustle is really when you hustle, it has a it has actually has a negative. I know we've commonized this and we've tried to make it look good, you know. But a hustle is a hustle, you know. But when you're working, there's intentionality. So you see, like what you're doing. I mean, not going to the farms, but sitting down and talking on the phones non-stop you know coming up with ideas doing research it takes your health it takes your time you can't do it with children around you you can if you want to go far you know yes. you need finances to scale up and um, these are things that i think as we are encouraging more young people to to get into um proper businesses, growing businesses, businesses that can scale up, businesses that they can in two, three, four years, five years perhaps, call in people and say, hey, we'd like you to work with us. Can you put in some equity, take some equity and give us some money? You know, businesses that can go to a venture capitalist, that can go before the dragons, is it dragons, lions, lions den it is, yeah. Yes. Go on shows like the Titan, yeah. So you, you need to put in your all. You need to put in your all. So, um, yes. And uh, we have a comment, another comment here that says um, the security challenges, the poor to zero support infrastructure and government's policy flip-flops. Yes. Those are all issues that have to be dealt with. But I believe we will deal with them one after the other. Once we see success in one area, you know, people, everybody wants to shine. <laughs> everybody wants to shine, you know. So yeah. I think the government would want to shine as well, you know. Okay. So there's this quote. I think it was on your page, by uh, Dr. Akiomi Additional, said by. 2030, which is not far away from now, the size of the food and agric business in Africa will reach $1 trillion. So if you're thinking of how to make money, that is the sector to be in. Yes. $1 trillion. That, yes. I think it's even being conservative. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, so that's that's big money. That is big. That's money. what. 
Yes, that, that's what inspired me because like my competitor in Lagos, the last year they got three point, I think three point two million dollars from Y Combinator to put into their business. So uh, many people are funding tech-driven businesses, uh, and agriculture is among the top three businesses people want to invest in. Uh, so building a good business case, a good startup, basically infusing technology ensuring that your business is scalable across the nation, people can use your product, uh, will help you get more money, will help you get more money. And like, like for us, we, we believe that our evaluation in the next five years will, will also, we hope to become a unicorn company. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. We look forward to it and then we, we're just applauding you. We're applauding you. And if there's any way we can help amplify your voice, please let us know. Sure. One of the things we, we plan to do next year is to have what we call um, a business toolkit, right? Yeah, a business toolkit. And that business toolkit, you're going to invite uh, people who know the business of business as well, including people who run all these tech hubs and know how to prepare you help you prepare your pitch decks, et cetera. You know, so we're, we're going to get all of that in and we're going to do our best to make it um, virtual or at, at the worst hybrid, you know. Okay. So I'll let you know, it will be posted on this platform, but I'll let you know personally. I'll let all our guests know personally. The other thing is that um, sometime this uh, year, before the end of the year, we plan to have, how do I call it? An in-house forum of our guests and some of our yeah. friends yeah, who join us regularly to tell us exactly what do you want as when I say small business, I don't mean a small business who just, which just wants to remain as a small business. I mean a small business which has its eyes on. I may be an acorn now, but I'm going to be that oak. I don't yeah. want to be a shrub. I want to be, there's a place for shrubs and that's fine. But we, we yeah. want to know what is it that you'd look for. And that will be a free a Zoom conversation. So I'm putting it out here, guys. Um, when the time comes, we'll put out the flyers and please make time. It will be a long one because we want to know where your pain points are and where your pleasure points are, you know. Uh, that would be great. Yes, yes. Um, guys, any questions? Guys in Calabar, any questions for... For Oyo and Iwang, I think we need to put up the Iwang. Um, can we put up the Iwang? Uh, yeah, and Oyo's um, thing, his um, Instagram handles. So basically, what's your percentage return on investments? Your percentage ROI? What's your ROI? Just generally speaking, because you know we are making, we are trying to make this thing very interesting to people, yes. so they can join you. Yes. Okay, but you know the food business is a crazy industry. Prices of food items are not static; it moves up, it goes down. So for us, it's between five percent to fifteen percent, and it depends on the food item. For instance, return on investment for Gary is more than return on investment for Casa, uh, for planting. Yeah, so it's that. Wow. So we don't have that. We don't. It's um. How do I put it? Because of the people we are selling to. Because of like, for instance, we have seventy percent of the poly sellers in Calabar sign up to our platform. So they buy they want to make profit so they are not buying like people who are buying to go and consume at home yes so sometimes we end up so they push them. down your margins yes so maybe planting you buy for 500 now from the farmer you end up selling 700 800 now to them so it's it's dicey so but we do five to fifteen percent on food items and we don't want to promise what we can't keep because someday I want to contest to be the governor of Crush State. I wouldn't want scandals. There you <laughs> so, go. 
There you yeah. go. Guys, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> you know, this is a young man who plans to go far. So however we can support him, let's let's support him. Um, Geraldine would like to meet up with you and discuss some ideas she's involved with at a discussion level for now. And she asked if I can give her your your personal sure. number. Is that okay? It's okay. Okay. Man. All right. Okay. I'll do that. We've yeah. also put up um, Iwang's, that's Iwang's um, um, yeah. website. Yeah. It's a very interesting website. Please go there and, and check things out for yourself and, um, and see. Hi, Ima Basi. Welcome. And um, yeah, somebody else came in while we we were talking. Victor, hi. Welcome. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But um, when you spoke about different things, do, don't people want things like Afan or um, what's it called now? Uh, Waterleaf, Momoikong. This is this is me showing my ethnic roots, and uh, oh. Obong. Do they not ask for those? Uh, for now, no. But you know, Calabar is already a city of food, so we try to get the ones that are a bit difficult to the restaurants. And we are starting, so we we can't start up with all the food lines because of how uh, lean our resources. Uh, is but sometime very soon anything you need anything about procurement of food that restaurants and or homes need you'll be able to get it on our platform so we hope that you don't need to even go to market because we'll bring market to your to the comfort of your houses or your restaurants and then we also give you those options you know i know why people love to go to market they want to carry the yam and check uh, throw it up and say mama yeah, the 500 now i will be able to give that option bring the option that choice people have in the normal regular market to the online market space and so so, so that'll be probably like it's 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 more of a social interaction than yeah, just a purchase yes uh, we would do we, we want to see how to bring the normal market into into the virtual space uh, but it's going to, you know, something about building digital products. Um, you won't have your final MVP at once. It's gradually, we will tweak till we get to that version that will become the haha -ha version for everybody. Okay. Well, we are looking forward to um, how you grow. Please let us know. And somebody said this. Uh, yes, Jerry, uh, Jerry on pr online price haggling. She's looking forward. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's interesting. Yeah, that that's interesting. You know. So um, we had a question on um, how do you? I think you've answered it, but since the question came, I'll ask: How do you integrate? Plan to integrate or are you integrating technology? How are you leveraging technology to agriculture and what? What are the benefits? What are the benefits so, of leveraging technology for agriculture? Just like I've said, we, we are an agri food tech company, so we use technology for what we are doing. Uh, we are focused now basically on building a marketplace where restaurants can buy, and it's true technology. We do online with offline support because most of the farmers can't use the normal technology. Uh, our normal, our normal value point is that every farmer should be able to open an online store on our platform in less than three minutes, set up their online store, upload their food items. So, for instance, if you want to buy a gary, you see up to 10 persons selling gary or 20, you can now check the one that goes well for you. But we, we can't get to that point now because um, all through our conversation with the farmers, most of them, 80% are not using smartphones. It's going to take us little time. We need to even invest in getting smart, just like what Jack Ma did um, with China, the China population, when he built his uh, e-commerce platform. He needed to provide smartphones, teach the farmers how to use it. So it, it might take us that same 
aroused for us to get to that point where we have all the farmers, most farmers putting out their stuff and you can find 50 people selling the same thing and you check the price that favors you well. That's a big picture um, someday. And we'll use um, a lot of AI will be able to help us to do uh, better cataloging and all of that perfectly. But beyond just we, beyond, beyond what we're doing on the platform, we hope also to see how we can assist farmers with information and how they can improve their yield. Like for, for, mm -hmm. for instance, people who are doing rice farming this year in Crash River State have been complaining about poor, um, the poor, uh, this thing. Sorry, grandma, don't finish from my head. Though. Poor yield. <laughs> 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 yes, poor yield, and 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 we know it's because of the land they've used the land uh, consecutively. So we hope to help do research, uh, do more research with uh, on how they can improve upon what they're doing. But it's going to take time because we are here for agriculture. We want to build the ecosystem, the aggregate ecosystem in Cross River State. Sorry, I'm sounding Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, I'm in Cross River. I'm a cross river, and that's our primary target for now. So we, we hope to get this soon. We hope to assist the farmers uh, through technology. And then me, me, most a whole lot of things we can do with technology. For instance, if you have equipment and you want to lease your equipment to farmers, so you can just build a simple website and link. we can link that to our own platform so that the farmers who are doing what we are doing can assess your equipment, hire the equipment, use it for their farms. Because one of the issues I've discovered in uh, Cross River, for instance, in, in our farming is that people are not doing commercial farming. They're just doing small, small, small farms. Uh, it's only the big, big boys that come with big money to do that. So if we have equipment, we have technology, these farmers will be able to do more with their little plot of land. Okay, so the value chain as a whole has to be um, examined and enhanced at every stage. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, I'd say the big boys were small boys at, this, at the time, and then the small yes. boys can become big boys. It takes intentionality. It takes. It might take a whole lot more work, but then that is why it's called work. <laughs> you know, so it's not a, a one-time thing. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. You, you've helped us wrap up our um, series on farming, oh. you know, and how we get our food. And I hope there are more people who are interested about where they get their food from, even how their food is grown, you know. Uh, don't be like my daughter who at two years old saw uh, a live chicken. She wasn't quite two, really. But she saw a live, a live hen, you know, walking around and pecking at its food and, and she ran away and I told her, that's the chicken you eat. I said, nah, it's not the same thing, <laughs> you know. So we, we need to know, I know there are different varieties of uh, plantain. I know that so many different things and um, that's the kind of information we'd like to know. Is it good for people who have um, uh, pre-diabetic conditions and stuff? So all those things enhance our knowledge and help us make better choices for ourselves. But before we go, um, I'd like to ask, is there anybody here on um, Instagram? We'll be monitoring. You see, you monitor Instagram. And I'll monitor here. We have, um, we have a program next week, which is Start and Improve Your Business. We're getting in a consultant who is an ILO certified trainer to come and talk to growing businesses who are really focused on growing to start and and uh, improve their businesses. So we have somebody uh, in Macaulay of Fix It has very generously offered to give a space to one person. And we don't want to just um, make an emotional decision. It has to be somebody who, who loves it. And you have to be in Calabar. Eh, sorry, not in Calabar. See, I'm already homesick. You have to be in Port Harcourt, you know, to, to be able to get the best value. So. Is there anybody, if there's anybody in Portal in here or you know somebody here, if I know, if you say put up your hand and 
I know that you can pay for the course. I shall not pick you. Sorry. But if you are in Port Harcourt, or you know somebody who's in Port Harcourt, please put up the number. One person will be monitoring IG. But just to take up the number 1 to 20. The 1 to 20. You see. 1 to 20. 1 to 20. Yes, please. And then we will have um, our guests choose the winning number. We have your... We have your it's all here. Oh, I think one fell down. Okay. This is online market, so we are selling markets. And we are monitoring. Anybody interested? It's going to be for about four hours next week, Wednesday, from about 9 30 to 2 30. And then we release you to go do very well. So it may not be you, but you know somebody who would benefit from it. So just put down a number. Okay. Any number between one and um, 20. Going once. We have to stop this program at 12 anyway, and we're, we're just we're past that time. Going twice. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll pick someone and we'll give that opportunity to somebody. Oh, yo. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you I, so I really, much for. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And yeah. we shall be reaching you. And please just flood us with information. As you flood us with information, we shall share because more okay. people, the more people who know who you are and what you do, the better for you and the better for for Cross River State. Yes. Yes, ma'am. The better for our internally generated revenue, our GDP, and all those lovely um, acronyms. So thank you, okay. everyone, on Instagram. Thank you very much. I need to shut down for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, thank you Oyo. Thank you for everybody who stayed with us on Facebook. Next week, we are going to talk about you and the digital universe. So join us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, Oyo. Bye. Thank you. Bye,